What's up, food surfers? I'm Eric Surf Six. Welcome to Eric Mealtime. And in today's episode, we're going to be doing Kai Seki Diori, which is Japanese course or set menu. I believe it's 11 courses total, and we're going to order three other additional courses. It's going to be a feast for sure. This is the one I want right here. Let's order this. That looks incredible. Look at that traditional Japanese course menu. Ho, 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 ho. Here we go. This is the first hors d'oeuvre. It's called mozuku. It's a type of slimy seaweed that's got vinegar in it. It's delicious. A bit of an acquired taste, but something I've really come to enjoy. Yep, there it is. Get a close up of that. Beautiful, huh? From the sea. Oh. This is better than dried seaweed. Can you get in there? You see what that looks like? A little bit crunchy, a little bit gooey. It's a lovely texture. I mean, it's, it's tart. It tastes like a fruit, like a tart fruit. Hmm. It's like the taste is kind of similar to a grape. So don't think of it as like seaweed or fishy. It's not fishy at all. It's a vegetable. Mm. And seaweed is so healthy for you. It's one of the best foods on the planet as far as nutrients, vitamins, minerals, amazing stuff. And every variety of seaweed is edible. Did you guys know that? Every single variety in the whole world of seaweed is edible. So the drink situation here is a little bit complicated. Three drinks have arrived. This right here is the welcome drink. So I guess I drink this one first because I feel welcome. Cheers, you guys. Cheers and beers. Team get some. Super, super refreshing. It's a pretty warm winter day today, so very nice. Short sleeves in the winter, nice. Next up is the hot sake. Look at this beautiful bottle. Gorgeous bottle. And it's hot sake today. Japanese rice wine. Going in for the cheers. Kush. Swish it around in your mouth a little bit. Very soothing. Oh, it feels so good when it goes down your throat. Oh, it's delicious. Let's do one more of these. One more for you guys. Oh, hot sake. It's been a while since I've had a hot sake. Cheers again. This one's for you guys. Can you taste it? Oh, it's creamy. This is a really good sake. Mmm. And this here is hot tea. Let's taste it and see what kind it is. That is, that's hojicha, which is roasted green tea. So when you roast it, it turns brown. It's not green anymore. But yeah, this is a real healthy one. So this is the tsubaki course right here that we've ordered. And this is the flower, the tsubaki, or camellia in English. And this right here, I believe is a jellyfish salad, kurage in Japanese. It's probably got some daikon radish in it too, and some carrots. And it's gonna be in a vinegar sauce, I'm pretty sure. Mmm. Yep, jellyfish. The jellyfish is nice and kind of jelly-like, does that make sense? Jellyfish is jelly-like in texture, yes. And the daikon radish gives it a bit of a crunch. And next up here, this. This is so gorgeous, it looks like a dessert, doesn't it? Fabulous, this is shiitake mushrooms here. Let's get two, two together. Wow. They're in a sweet shoyu sauce. I've never had shiitake mushrooms like that. Really dessert-like, amazing. And this is egg right here, scrambled egg. That looks like cheesecake. <laughs> Love the attention to detail. Looks like a piece of cheese, doesn't it? 
correction. This is cake. It's cake. I really thought it was egg. I think maybe it is kind of cheesecake-like. Interesting, huh? Dessert coming first. This is a first. Yeah, very interesting. This for sure is a fish cake. This is not going to be sweet. And it looks like we've got some maybe nori in there, some seaweed. Mmm. The Japanese meatball. A fish meatball. That's good. Meaty. And this here, I'm guessing either pumpkin or chestnut. Let's cut it in half so we can see. If I put it in my mouth, you're not going to see it. Mmm. Like sweet potato. Pumpkin would be orange, right? Oh, it's like a little manju. Okay, well that was the dessert. Now it's time to rate this meal. On my rating scale between one and two. What's up? Dessert, was that, that, was, that was dessert right there. Next up is the sashimi course. Are you happy to sashimi? Yeah, that's one of my t-shirts. Get some. Sashimi. So we've got three different types here. This is the Maguro tuna. And then we've got beautiful looking squid. I love how this is sliced. Beautiful. And then this is Thai or sea bream right here. Looking good. Let's start with the wasabi and the Maguro together. For sure. Yeah, a little spicy from the get-go here. Actually, the wasabi is best on Maguro. It doesn't go good on the squid. It's too overpowering. And on the Thai, you don't want to do it with like a white fish either. So we use it all for the Maguro. This is some really spicy wasabi in this restaurant. It varies from place to place, so be careful. <laughs> All right. Squid is a bit of a gamble when you do it sashimi style because sometimes it's tough, like really tough. You got to chew it for days. Mmm. But this is really nice and soft. Oh, goodness. Hardly have to chew it at all. Let's go in for some of the Thai hair and we'll get some of the radish with it together the salad happening here nice the daikon gives it a bit of crunch all these are delicious they're all banging mm. this is an additional item that we've ordered to add to the sashimi course and it's called button shrimp i've never actually had this variety of shrimp before beautiful looking shrimp and it's raw but don't be afraid of raw shrimp. At least if you're in Japan, don't be afraid of it because it is delicious. Is it gonna be one bite? Yeah, don't think I'd wanna do the tail. This is pretty heavy, pretty heavy and, and pretty hard. This is what you want. The flesh of the sea, oh yeah. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. Button Abbey. Button shrimp. Oh, wow. That is the biggest bite of raw shrimp I've ever had, I think. It's really sweet. Nice. Meaty. Very nice. Not fishy. Let's try some of the seaweed garnish here. Two different varieties. Fishy, salty, tastes like it just came out of the sea. Goodness. All right, I'm going in for the next one. We're gonna have another one of these here. The camera person thinks this is too fresh of fish to eat. We're gonna hit it with wasabi. Sort of kill the sweetness a little bit. I think with some spice, this would be way better than just that sweet and gooeyness. Yeah, I think this will make it perfect. And that, that's kind of the deal with sashimi. You gotta figure out exactly how it works for you. This will this will be fine, I think. Oh yeah. Oh, totally different flavors going on now. Mmm. Yeah, the sweetness goes away and it just cranks up the heat. 
Oh, that's good. Look at this gorgeous dish. Have you guys noticed that every dish in this course is different? Everyone is different, different colors, different shapes, different styles. Fabulous. Let's open the lid. Woo! This is the Nimono. It's got a very distinctive smell. Simmered cooking. Nimono. It's very common in Japan. So it looks like three items. We've got some tofu, it looks like here. And I think that's yuba or tofu curd on the outside. And then shrimp there in a type of vegetable. Maybe could be spinach, could be komatsuna. Not really sure. I'll let you know. go. Mm. Nimono. This is really nice winter foods. Hot simmered foods. This is, oh, delicious. Yeah, I think it's spinach. Mm. Oh, delicious. Look at this gorgeous looking piece of tofu. Oh, it's hot. Mm. Oh, perfection. It reminds me of home cooking. That's what this dish reminds me of. And the shrimp, you're supposed to peel it, but I'm gonna just go for it whole, just like this. It's gonna be crunchy, extra crunchy. Give the teeth and the jaw a bit of exercise. Mm. We'll finish up with the soup here. I'm definitely gonna be drinking this. That's the Yuba right there, the tofu curd. Mm, very rich tofu. Oh, fabulous. Oh, we're out of sake. So when you're out of sake in Japan and you want more, you can just put the bottle like that. that that's considered polite to do that so that they can see that it's empty and then they will come soon and serve you another one. Yeah, they're very quick in Japan. Yeah. That was really fast. My goodness, she came fast. How did she see that? Cheers. The next course is the Shabu Shabu Nabe. Yeah, you cook it at your table. Look at that lovely marbled beef, thinly sliced beef. Mm -hmm. And we've got some additional meat here because we wanted to show you the show you, I mean show you the Wagyu. It's Wagyu from Kagoshima Prefecture, which is southwestern Japan. And I love it how it's sliced thin like this because it just it's cooks so fast and it's just so, so soft when it's this thin. Looking good. So it takes about eight minutes to cook. Yeah, you can see it's hibachi. Got a pretty good fire going. Maybe it'll be only five minutes. I'm guessing only five minutes. Would you like to see a magic trick while we wait? Here we go. I've got some cards here that I've uh, pre-shuffled just to save time. They're all mixed up. Cards, uh, I believe it's one to ten. Okay. And uh, today I'm going to do this for my Spanish friends in uh, Spanish-speaking countries. So uh, my Spanish isn't very good, but... Uh, Let's give it a try. So first we spell out uh, uno, you, and oh, and uno in Spanish, of course, is one. Yeah. And then, uh, what is it? Dos, D, O, S. Dos, you get the two. The next is tres, tres. I don't know how to spell tres, so we'll just go to English. T, H, R, E, E. Sorry about that. Lo siento. Three, four, F, O, U, R, four, five, F, I, V. 
E. Six is S I X. Yes, that's my number. Seven S E V E. And lucky seven. Eight E I G H T. You get the eight. Did, did you see the eight? Almost missed that one. N I N E is the nine T and ten. Ooh. I'll show you guys how to do that at the end of the video. Next up is the polka dot dish. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Super, super hot. Oh, sizzling. And this is called chawamushi. It's an egg-based dish, steamed. To me, it resembles pudding, but it's not sweet. It's an egg dish. And then in the bottom are some goodies. You get some meat. That's a ginkgo seed, ginkgo tree seed. Oh, jackpot. Shiitake mushroom, shrimp. I'm gonna go for the ginan, the ginkgo tree seed, and some meat. I'm not really fond of the pudding that much. It's better than I remember it. Yeah, I think last time I had it, I described it as baby food, but. This is elderly people's food. That's what it is. It's kind of like a salty pudding, but not too salty. It's got a pureness to it. I think it's done. Oh, ah, looks good. Oh. Back to the Shabu Shabu Nabe. It's cooled off a bit. Let's get into it. A couple different kinds of mushrooms here. I like that. Three different kinds of mushrooms in here. Ooh, bonus. Definitely got to get some meat happening. All the meat Let's come out. Some greens going in just like this. No sauce. Well, it's nabe. It has the sauce already. That's what nabe is. So it should be flavored. Mmm. Well, correction, there is some sauce right here. This is a, it's a spicy yuzu sauce, which is a citrus fruit. So you put that in. And the, uh, the waitress warned us that it's pretty spicy. So we'll see. Oh. Wow. Spicy and sour at the same time. Oh, that's delightful. Mmm. Mushrooms. Oh. The wonderful thing about Shabu Shabu is it cooks so fast. It does not take very long at all. Yep, let's load up the tofu here. We'll do some soup this time. That's how you're really supposed to eat nabe, with the soup. I like a little bit of pink in my meat, a little bit of pink. Look at how the soup changed colors, it got darker. Yeah, from the meat. Yep. A lot of fat content in this meat. You can tell, oh, I got a full bowl. <laughs> let's hit it with the spice. I love this yuzu hot pepper spice. This is amazing. Get it while it's hot. Oh, that meat is so fatty. So good. Try some soup. Soup is very pleasant. It's not overpowering. Especially after you put the meat in it, the soup really richens. You always get really hot and sweaty after eating nabe or ramen all the time. That was a delicious dish. All right, next up is the tanayakashi, which is how to do this card trick. So after you've shuffled the cards really well into this exact order, that's all you have to do, and the trick is done. This is a self-working trick. 
So as long as the four is on the top and the seven is on the bottom and all these cards are in order in between, this trick will work for you. Ready? Here we go. You got your screenshot? All right. So you just simply spell out the cards. So the first card is the ace, A, C, E, and you get the ace. And then two, T, W, O, and you got the two. T, H, R, E, E, and you got the three. And I don't have to do the rest, but trust me, it works. They all come out all the way to the 10. It's a great trick. Anybody can do it. Give it a try. Impress your friends. Be the life of the party. The tempura has arrived, looking good. This is piman, or bell pepper. And in Japanese, they have a saying called pimanatama. You're a pimanatama. I'm a pimanatama, which means that your head is full of nothing, because a piman is a bell pepper. There's nothing inside, except maybe a couple seeds knocking around. To the piman. Pimanatama. Oh, so soft. Goodness, that is fabulous. And the shrimp, this is the best of the best right here. You cannot go wrong with fried shrimp. Fried shrimp, tempura shrimp. This is the best way to eat shrimp, I think. That was a Mark Ween's head tilt right there. That's how good this is. Oh. Mmm. Oh. Fabulous. Next up, the pumpkin. Japanese pumpkin is terrific. It's so sweet. Mmm. Creamy. Mmm. Oh, it's great. And this is the lotus root or Rencon. Typically it's a bit crunchy, which is nice. Oh. So this is called Amiyaki steak, which is grilled steak from Kagoshima Prefecture. It looks fabulous. Let's go in. It comes with wasabi. Yes. Wasabi. We'll just go like that. A little bit of shoyu. Probably doesn't need it. The shoyu is actually for the sushi. Oops. Wow. It's got a different kind of flavor. Very rich. More. Let's get some more. Wow. The juices in this thing. Oh my goodness. That's what it is. Super juicy steak. <laughs> it's in a steak sauce. Kind of mellow, but it's good. It's got some daikon too. Oh, that's just the flavor of this meat. I've never had anything like it. Really, this is, it's different from like teppanyaki. One more. We'll save the rest for the camera person. Gotta do one more. Mm. A little bit of wasabi accents it so nicely. This, I believe, is the perfect steak right here. Oh, goodness. And it's not cheap. About $3 for each of those tiny little slices. Worth every penny. Look at this sushi right here. Definitely dope. So we've got six pieces here. This is very curious because two of them, these two, both look like hotate or scallops, which is very odd in Japan to get two of the same one. What is that in the middle there? This is sea urchin. This is the mystery item. I'm gonna save that for last because that is really, really special right there. Yep, maggots, looks like maggots. It's actually worse than maggots. And then this is the ikura. Let's start out with this one, the salmon roe. Creamy. 
creamy goodness. Creamy bubble popping goodness. That's what those are. Okay, let's go in for a scallop. Raw scallops. I'm hit and miss on these. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. It really depends. This is a good one. It doesn't taste fishy. It doesn't taste sandy. Yeah, it's fresh. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Let's cleanse up the palate here with some pickled ginger. Gotta eat. Have a look at the shrimp right here. I love this, that they save the head right here. Well, they cut the head off, but you get the, uh, what do you call this? The legs. Mm-hmm. And they've cooked it temporal style. Crunchy party here. <laughs> I'm like eating potato chips. <laughs> That's a treat. Yep. And now for the rest of the shrimp. And this is Ama Ebi, I believe, so sweet shrimp. Pretty standard in sushi. A bit on the gooey side. Those other two earlier were much better. Yeah, those jumbo ones, but still, good stuff. All right, let's move in here. This is the uni or sea urchin. This is one of my favorites. I didn't used to like it, but I'm a fan of it now. It's got a nice color. Yep, you want like an orangish brown, that is typically the best. Creamy goodness. It's like peanut butter. Like the best peanut butter you've ever had. Oh, fabulous. All right. One more cleansing of the palate. Because this last one, we really want to taste. We want to taste all of it for all it's worth. Introducing Shirako or Fish sperm, yep, fish sperm. It's a delicacy. I think I've had this once, maybe twice before, and that's it. It's been a while. It tastes like mashed potatoes and butter and a little bit of sour cream, but extra heavy on the cream. Delicious, yes. Really, it's good stuff. Yeah, I would eat that again. We're getting down to the end of the meal here. And in Japan, before the dessert, what do you have to eat? You guys know, right? There's three things that you're gonna get served if you go to a restaurant like this. It's gonna be these three things. Rice, pickled vegetables, and miso soup. Yeah, those are the three. They always come together. Yep, let's get some. You can eat them in any order that you like. Or you can combine these together. I think what I see a lot of Japanese people do is throw this, they just pop it onto the rice. And there's something on this rice, I'm not sure what this is. Little baby fish. That's interesting. Can't see them because I threw all the pickled vegetables on. Party. I'm a big fan of the pickled vegetables. Mm. Love the crunch. Mm -hmm. Love the crunch. And let's check out the miso soup game. Does it have game today? They're always different. Is this the yuba again? The, uh, the tofu skin? Looks like it. Some nice seaweed there. Mmm. Nice. It's a red me salt. Ah, oh, it's a good one. Yeah, very rich. For those of you that are still hanging in there watching this video, we finally have made it to the last course, the dessert. Yes. Cheesecake and pistachio ice cream. Got some coffee to go with it. And you know how you can tell you're in a nice restaurant? They give you a second Oshibori to wash your hands with.
after you're finished with the meal. But before the dessert. Yep, that's what they do. You gotta love it. Steam, hot towel. Oh. It's also polite not to wipe your face. But when you're in a private room, <laughs> there are no rules. Okay, let's get into this. It's a Western style dish. Did you guys know this is not a Japanese style dish? This is, looks like it comes from a carnival or something. Yes, or the kids plate. Ice cream first. It's very light, spongy. I wouldn't really call it cheesecake. It tastes more like, it's closer to a mousse. It's very good though. It's got a tartness to it. Yeah. Let's switch over here to the ice cream. Pistachio, this is one of my favorite flavors. Probably top three flavors of ice cream. Pistachio. It's pistachio matcha, green tea. Very nice. My number one ice cream flavor of all time, Rocky Road. I like the nut, the nuts. The nuts and the marshmallows, yep. That's what it is. And with dessert, coffee is always the best thing. Definitely some coffee, straight up. Oh. The end of a wonderful meal. Well guys, what did you think? It was definitely a treat. That was 11 courses, plus we had the three additional courses, the sashimi, the sushi, and the steak. So total of 14 courses. I think that's the most courses I've ever done in Japan. And the great thing about Japanese set cuisine like this courses is it's not that filling. I'm not totally stuffed, which is great, but you can try so many different varieties of food. Now it is time to rate this meal. This is the last of the sake. I've been saving this one for the final rating here. <sighs> yes, that definitely helps me uh, think about the rating, the sake. Okay, presenting the Suicide King. You all know why he's called the Suicide King, right? He's the only king that is stabbing himself in the head with a knife. That's why they call it the Suicide King. The only one. So here we go. On my rating scale, between one and six Eric heads, I'm gonna give it a, whatever that is. I can't see that card. That's what it is. So if it's a six, that means I'm doing a giveaway and there'll be three get some snack packs. Yeah, it's a six. The trick worked. And I'm going to send them out to you guys as my thanks for watching my videos. If you're not familiar with the Get Some Snack Pack, there's a link right up here. And the only thing you have to do for your chance to win is put a comment down below. Anything you like. And I will choose three winners and announce them in the very next Eric Meal Time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for making it all the way to my end screen. So now what? Well, click around, watch a few more videos. How about checking out my Patreon account? Links are all right there on the screen. Cheers and beers, team, get some.